Today my travels take me to Clerkenwell. For those of you unfamiliar, Clerkenwell, or Clerkenwell as I pronounced it just then for some reason, lies just outside the ancient city of London. It's a very old parish indeed, so it's a bit of a surprise to see a modernist building like this. This is Finsbury Health Centre and it's more important than it looks. Let me give you a bit of context. Clerkenwell is a place that's gone up and down in the world over the centuries. Being just outside the jurisdiction of the city fathers, it was seen as a good place to put the sort of thing that the city didn't like. In the 19th century, that meant it became quite industrialised and tended to be fairly working class. Unfortunately, by the 1930s, it had become a run-down and deprived area. This was a situation echoed in many boroughs across London at this time. Harold Riley, the leader of Finsbury Borough Council, the local authority at the time, felt that change was needed. Dr Chuni Kai Latial agreed with him. The National Health Service wouldn't be founded until 1948, but it would be a mistake to think that socialised healthcare was non-existent in Britain. Those on lower incomes had their general practitioner visits covered by the National Insurance Act of 1911. In 1936, the Public Health London Act officially brought health care for lower income Londoners under the care of their local authorities. Finsbury, having a large low income population, was the perfect place to experiment with a new philosophy of health care. Dr Latial was the chair of the Public Health Committee and a general practitioner himself. He felt that what was needed was centralised health care, a state-of-the-art modern health centre to replace, in his words, a piecemeal and scattered service. For Harold Riley, a committed socialist, this was sweet music. It tied in with his own plans to clear the slums and improve living conditions, and he agreed wholeheartedly with Dr Latiel's plans. Having identified a site, it was time to look at architecture. Latiel approached the architectural firm of Tecton, headed by Bertold Lubetkin. Lubetkin was himself a socialist, formerly of the Soviet Union, with a strong belief in the notion of architecture for the benefit of the common man. He was very enthusiastic about Riley and Latial's ideas. Lubetkin wanted to create buildings that could in themselves bring about social change. Finsbury Health Centre was an ideal vehicle to try this out. The health centre was designed to be open and inviting, no formidable Victorian institution, but an airy and clean building. Ordinary people should feel comfortable using it. In fact, Lubetkin's design was intended to evoke the notion of a smiling person holding out their arms in an embrace. On a more practical level, the building was intended to be light and well ventilated, in line with notions of healthy living at the time. It included murals encouraging a healthy lifestyle. The walls of the offices were movable for convenience, with soundproofing between the floors and the plumbing and heating ducts hidden behind panels on the outside of the building. The health centre opened in 1938 and immediately became a symbol of what British healthcare could be. Unfortunately, World War II undid much of Lubetkin's work. The walls were whitewashed, the plumbing was moved inside, and the whole thing was turned into a casualty centre. While Lubetkin may not have approved, he was, ironically, overruled by the needs of the civilian population. Doubly ironically, the centre became a poster child during the war. A series of posters designed by Abram Games with the slogan Your Britain, Fight for It Now, showcased the best of modern British architecture as an aspiration for the post-war era. Different aspects of this future Britain were portrayed set against slummy pre-war conditions, and the health centre was chosen to represent the future of healthcare. Triply ironically... Winston Churchill would have the poster banned on the grounds that he considered it a disgraceful libel on the conditions in Britain. Despite this official disapproval, in the post-war years the health centre would again be held up as an example. In fact, when the NHS was founded, the Finsbury Health Centre was considered a model. 
Unfortunately, the money wasn't there to roll the concept out nationwide, but the basic concepts of airy and inviting buildings are still very much in the minds of modern hospital architects. For its pioneering ethos, the centre was Grade 1 listed in 1970. The building has undergone a restoration, but unfortunately the smiling face is rather obscured by trees. Ideas of selling the centre off in the early 2010s appear to have been squashed, however. Lubetkin and Riley had even more radical plans for Clerkenwell, but even though Lubetkin would do more work in the borough, the wider plans for a socialist utopia in Finsbury never came to fruition. And oh boy, I'm going to enjoy moderating the comments on this one. Clerkenwell has changed a lot over the years. The slums are gone, the industries declined, and abandoned factories and warehouses have been turned into flats and offices. Nevertheless, despite everything, the centre remains open serving the community as it was intended to do over 80 years ago. Latial, Lubetkin and Riley would surely be proud. Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this look at another of London's less obvious landmarks. If you did, please do hit the like button. If you want to see more, then do subscribe. Have you ever used the centre? Do you like it? Personally, I think it needs a spruce up, but... It still looks exciting, even today. Anyway, I'd be interested to hear your opinion, and I will see you again very soon. Cheerio.